In the last video, I fought a rusty fender and I replaced the radiator, but I did not finish putting the car back together. So in this video, I pick up where I left off. Now I'm gonna reconnect the hood latch, which goes back in here. Uh, pull this lever so there's no slack to get the ball back in. There we go. There's a look at it from above. Connect this, whatever it is. Now for the headlights. Since it is so involved to get to the radiator, since all the lines are hooked back up, I'm going to fill it and bleed it now to make sure I have no leaks. I almost made a mistake like I made last time. Remember the oil pan with the crack? Well, it's drained. There's no oil in the car now. I almost really screwed myself over again. So it's the next day and it's time to attack the oil pan. So let's get under the car and see what we have to do. This area was a mess yesterday after doing the radiator, but I cleaned up a bit because I'm going to be on my back. So we're under the car and this is the oil pan. You can see the drip there, but there are these bolts that connect to the oil pan through the transmission here and here. And I think there's only two of them, maybe a third one right here. Let's see, does that attach the oil pan? I think it does. Then the rest of them go around the pan like that. So I'm gonna start with the ones that are over here. And I'm taking these off with a 16 millimeter. So now, I'm gonna take these off. And, I almost missed them, but there are some more bolts. One, two, three, four, up here. For these here, they're not directly in here, so I'm gonna use this five millimeter hex. It's a little Allen key to hopefully get at them. Yeah. Yeah, that gets right on it. There we go. All right, that should let me pry it off now. There we go. All right, it is off. And this is a good chance to see if there's any flakes. Because remember when I ran the car for a little while? I don't know if I'd recognize the flakes, but this oil pan is pretty clean, which is good. Like I don't see any shavings or anything. and That is fantastic. Everything looks pretty good up here. So what I'm gonna do now is clean off this surface, which is already pretty clean, and prep it for the new oil pan. Yeah, it's already very clean, which is nice. And that's a gasket, and I do not have one to replace it. So I'm gonna take my chances. Now I'm gonna wipe it down with brake parts cleaner.
I'm surprised by how smooth the surface actually is. Now, there's some staining, but very little of the RTV remained. Now to make sure that the new oil pan matches the old. And it looks to be identical. So now I just gotta prep this oil pan and get it on. If I had acetone, I would use acetone, but brake parts cleaner dries very fast. So I just wanna make sure it's nice and clean. Here I am using some Permatex oil compatible RTV. I'll talk more about this later. All right, now I'm gonna try and neatly and easily reposition the oil pan. I'm gonna put a bolt here and here to hold it up and then hand tighten the rest and allow the RTV to set. So let's see if we can do this. It's always nerve wracking. I think I did it. All right, so those two are hand tight. And I'm gonna hand tighten the rest and then I'm gonna go chill for a little bit. And now for the awkward ones. All right, so that's all the oil pan bolts except for the ones that connect to the transmission. So, so yeah, I'm gonna let it cure for an hour, then I'll be back. If you've been following along, you'll know that I jacked up the car just to do the brakes. And that's when I noticed the oil pan and the radiator issues. So I didn't bleed the brakes because I knew I had to fix the oil pan and the radiator, but while the RTV cures on the oil pan, is a great time to go ahead and bleed the brakes. So that's what I'm doing. <laughs> Look at that rain. Yo, it's blowing rain. I'm like four feet into the garage and it's blowing rain on me. Hey, doggy. So the manual I have says tighten these bolts down to 132 inch pounds using several steps. So I'm gonna use 50, 100, and 132. Yeah, and it's been an hour since I put everything on hand tight. And it doesn't mention an order, but I'm going to go side to side, and work my way around. And this is a bit tedious, but it's what it calls for. So that's the final torque on the final torque value. And now I gotta wait 24 hours for the RTV to cure. I almost forgot these. And my manual says go to 33 foot pounds. So, I'm going to go ahead and put these back in. So in a weekend, that's a new radiator and a new oil pan. But now I have to wait until the RTV cures. So I can't finish finish until tomorrow. And, 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 and. I got new side marker lights and they should be showing up today. I'm gonna throw my rusty fenders back on, but I'm gonna see what I can do about getting some new ones. I think those are my side marker lights showing up right now. Hey, how you doing, man? Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. Well, this is one set of them. For my oil pan, I use this, which is Permatex Ultra Black. Works just fine. But I also had this and I forgot about it. This is Permatex, the right stuff. This has a 24 hour cure.
secure time. This says you can return to service in 90 minutes. With the time crunch that I'm under now, I should have used this. I could have taken my car and got it inspected today, but instead I use this, so I have to wait till tomorrow. But yeah, Permatex the right stuff, Permatex Ultra Black. Both work, but this is faster. If any of you have experience with either of these, let me know pros and cons if you like one more than the other for any reason. I'd be curious to hear. Which reminds me, I need to get more organized because I have a lot of stuff that may be hidden and I'll buy new so to save time. Then I end up cleaning up and finding multiple of the same thing. So yeah, like this here, I haven't even used it before because I have, have it elsewhere. So once I refill the oil and the coolant, the car will be drivable again and I can get it inspected. I also scored some silver fenders from a guy locally that I need to clean up, remove a pinstripe from, and install instead of my rusted fenders. If you'd like to follow along, hit subscribe. If you would like to see the things I've already done to my golf, check out my playlist. Thanks for watching. Take care.